FM 94, The Dark. It is that time. It's time to get to know an artist we play here on The Dark. And tonight on the phone with me is LJ, and he is from the band Seven Dust. And uh, LJ, first of all, uh, great to talk to you. This is the first time you and I have had a chance to talk. How are you doing? Oh, fantastic. And first of all, let me say thank you very much for taking the time and uh, giving us uh, the opportunity to speak about our music and what's going on in the world right now in this crazy time we're in. So thank you. Absolutely. Now, let's let's talk about that, because I've talked to a lot of artists over the last three, four months, uh, a lot of big name artists and kind of interested to get your take on the pandemic that is happening and what it's doing to the music industry. What has it done, I guess, to Seven Dust this year? Well, I mean, completely to everyone. It's completely shut us down as far as touring, uh, uh, being around. I don't like to say fans at all. I like to say the family that supports music. Uh, it's completely been a, com- a shock, a uh, life-changing experience that we never thought we would uh, ever experience. But what I'm trying to do with myself and my family is to make sure we do the right thing uh, uh, with social distancing and and being proper with wearing the mask because obviously we, we're seeing that once we do that, we could probably try to at least get back to some type of normalcy. And that's what I can't wait for, man, because I think music is a, a healer. And once we're able to get everyone back into a place where we're safe, and to play concerts again, I mean, imagine how cool it's going to be when that's able to happen again. Yeah, it is. You know, let me ask you this, LJ. You've been in the business many years, and you guys are a very established band. And I know that you've helped out a lot of younger bands, and, and your bandmates have helped that. Are you really concerned about these younger up-and-coming bands not getting an opportunity or actually quitting because of COVID-19? Oh, oh, no, I would hope not. And that's, that's something I've never heard before. I would hope, uh, wow, that uh, none of us would give up because this is only, a, I feel like, an obscure obstacle that we have to either climb over or get around some type of way, but eventually we will. Uh, but that's a really cool question, too, because I feel like even as an established artist, this has definitely brought a damper on a lot of things that uh, you think about for the future. But I would never, in my own heart, and this is me personally, Speaking, and I would hope that uh, listeners out there would understand this too, that you can't give up. We have to keep trying and keep fighting because uh, eventually we'll make it through this like we do with the other things, you know. So I feel like uh, there's, a, there's a, a rainbow at the end of all of this, hopefully. <laughs> right. You know, the reason I bring that up is because I'm, I'm concerned about the venues, how many we're going to lose. And oh, if, that's, if that's the case then these venues are going to be trying to book bands like yourself rather than younger or bands or up-and-coming bands. And, you know, I, that, that's what I'm concerned about because I'm concerned about that smaller venue that maybe can't book the big-name bands, but the small bands are no longer there. Yeah, I get what you're saying, you know. And so then I, I look at it like this. Then that might be something that we have to do as people uh, like you with the radio behind you and people like us can possibly do shows that are safe and can help these bands out you know like maybe seven of us can come into your town when everything is safe and that local band that wasn't able to play before now guess what because of your help and what we're talking about now we're going to put those guys to open up for seven dust you know i mean right. i think things like that just different ways to go down the avenue that we've been forced to go down we have to make it work Creative-wise, uh, during the pandemic, uh, I've seen all sorts of creativity uh, via social media and that. How have you guys uh, been doing that? Oh, you know, uh, we're still in the middle of trying to figure out the, the, the best thing. You know, we're talking about doing streaming shows and all that stuff for the future because right now, what 7 us, what we're looking at, we're trying to what we call is a Nashville run. And that's uh, starting from Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday, and, like, doing that little short tour run. But that's only in the places that are going to allow that. But as of right now, we don't know who's going to allow that. You know, we don't even know what's going to happen two months from now with what's going on with everyone. So uh, it's still a waiting process, you know. And you mentioned the streaming thing. I had a chance to talk with Wes Scantlin from Puddle of Mud a few weeks ago. And uh, they were going to try to do something like that, and then it kind of fell through because of uh, what was happening at that time in the world. Uh, how are you guys thinking about it, and how is the industry thinking about it? Is this something that it's almost like a pay-per-view kind of thing? Absolutely. It's just we're, we're waiting just like everyone else is. You know, uh, 
And someone asked me the other day, so when do you think you guys are going to be back at a concert? I'm like, well, I can't tell you that. I, <laughs> I can't say if we could go to uh, this town in uh, Mississippi and play a show. If you know, Who knows what's going on in that town? What, what, what the, the status is of the, the, the virus? What's happening? So I can't be that one. I have to just sit back and wait and say I'll be able to be there once it's safe. Right, right. But for and, and, all of us. Not but, just for me. I have a family. I have kids. I have yeah. a wife. Uh, I have little ones. I mean, it's not just me. It's, it's everyone. I, that's what I, I worry about. It's all of us. It's you. It's your grandmother, your grandfather, your cousin. Your, it's all of us. It's like we have to do the right thing before we're able to make it happen again. That's all. Right, yeah. I'm just kind of curious how that, uh, if it would work out, if people would actually pay to watch a stream. That's kind of what I'm thinking of because, you know, well, everybody's been kind of giving it away for free, at least the acoustic shows. But I'm kind of curious to see if you had a full-on show. Like, if you're playing in Nashville and you got some guys to video it, uh, would they have to log in via paying, or is that something? I mean, somehow you guys got to make some money, right? Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good that's a good question too. So, what I would like to think that if we were able to do a stream, it would be a full-on concert with light. Uh, you're going to see a show. Yeah, I think that would be something that's more worth if you're going to pay. Or even if you do that, I don't know. I'm not necessarily talking about seven us making someone pay, but I'm saying I would think if we do go into that avenue that we would make sure that it would be a show that you will remember you know i think that's the only way to do it if you're gonna do it you know even with this virtual video and you know the virtual concerts and stuff you know at least they're making it look really big and right and you know you want to see it you know you, think about this we've been in our houses for so long i think any type of uh visual scene i think people will get it you know say oh my god that's my, that band that i love it they're jamming <laughs> Absolutely. We're talking to LJ, of course, the lead singer of the band Seven Dust. And you guys have been rocking, uh, what, since 1994-ish? Is that about right? Yeah, yeah we've been around for a long time. <laughs> and it, the reason I say that, because the, the latest song that you covered, Soundgarden, The Day I Tried to Live, actually came out in 1994. Is that kind of the reason why you chose that song? Not at all. Oh, okay. Uh you know, we were in the studio, and we're a band that, you know, we've not done a lot of covers. I think we might have done one cover, uh, Marvin Gaye, maybe, okay. uh, if I can remember correctly, which was one of the best, I thought. But uh, when we were in the studio, I was like, you know, we've never really done a cover. Why don't we try to do a cover for this album, not knowing anything was going to happen, what was going on in the world, because everything was normal at that point in time when we did the album. Uh, what cover do you choose? Well, it was very hard when you have so many different uh, entities in the band that have ideas, so it was very hard for us to come up with the perfect song, we thought. So Elvis Bassett, our producer, came up with the idea, with the Soundgarden song, which he could have picked any Soundgarden song, mm -hmm. any Chris Cornell song, would have been fine. The only problem was, was me as a singer, I felt like, oh my God, <laughs> how am I going to make this song authentic enough for people that love Soundgarden and Chris Cornell to respect my vocals and my band. And I just did it with love, the passion, the energy that his band has given me all these years that I look up to. And I went in there and sang my heart out. And, uh, you know, it's kind of funny how ironically it happened. This, this album got pushed back and we didn't know what we were going to do. We don't even know the release date, but we were like, you know, we're not able to release the album. Let's put out the cover. And how funny is it, or not funny, but how serious it makes sense to what's going on right now in the world. And we're still being able to give our family, not fans, I like to say, yep. a piece of us in what we're doing. And we're not just sitting back. We're still here. The album's coming out, and this is something from the album. And the day I tried to live seems perfect. Uh, a lot of people back in the day when Chris and those guys wrote the song, they thought it was about something bad. But it was actually about a man or a woman trying to go out into life and do something different and to experience things differently. And I think that's what we're kind of going through right now. Yeah, that's, I mean, I remember that song. I mean, you and I are almost identical, same age. So you grew up mm -hmm. in the same era with a, this a super unknown in that song. And I oh, just, yeah. I, I just, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a phenomenal song. I mean, he was a phenomenal artist by in all means. So Still, it, it, will, it will never, his legacy will continue to go on. Uh, I, I think he's a staple for any band out there. Soundgarden is a band that you, you go to. That's a go to band, you know what I mean? You know, and let me ask you that really quick because uh, I, you know, I've had a chance to talk a few times with David Ellison from Megadeth. He's a Minnesota yeah. kid, so which is cool. And yeah. of course, they they were the big four, you know, Metallica, 
Megadeth, Slayer, Anthrax, you know. And right. uh, they were recently just talking in you know, one of his podcasts he had going on with uh, Tom Hazard, his uh, singer for his new project, Ellison. They were talking mm-hmm. about, you know, that was the big four then. And then the grunge had their big four of Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, Nirvana, and Alice in yeah. Chains. We don't see, is there any, now, does Active Rock have a big four or not? Or not? I mean, oh, wow. what do you that's think of good. that? Yeah, that's good. That's a good question. You know what, man? I think I think we do, but I just don't think we know. I think if we get these bands together and tour together uh, more, once we're able to get back out again in the Active Rock world, instead of, you know, having this band tour here and having this band tour here, let's get these bands that are, you know, powerhouses together, and I think you'll start seeing that again. Uh, I think we all individually know the bands that we do love and the bands that we would love to see tour together. And I think that's something that now, with this break, I think that more people will start seeing that. Maybe we need to tour with this this band, and maybe we need to do this, and you know, maybe this will be worth it when we come back out, if that makes sense. All right, LJ, I'm putting you on the spot, and if you don't want to answer, you don't have to. But if you had, oh, to, if you had oh, to put, God. if you had to put the active rock power four together, who would that uh, be? I don't know, man. See, I'm, I know I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, that's weird. I, you know what? Because you know, man, me and my buddy Ivan, we always talk doing this whole thing. Me and Ivan yep. always text back and forth. I would love to think that Seven Dust would be really cool to go out with power. Uh, you know, with a uh, Five Finger Death Punch. I think that would be a really good thing. Okay. But then you go and you ask me, and then I'm an old school head, and I'm just, uh, I love music. I would still like to go out with a band like Tool or Perfect Circle. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I think that in this time right now, Seven Dust, Rage Against the Machine. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that would, it's just so many. You're right. You just, you put me in a hard spot. I did. You know, okay. So I'm going to make it really easy for you now. Let's take yeah. away any band's that started in the 90s, and let's only go bands from 2000 to today. Who would the four be? Five oh, Finger, yeah. obviously, would be one. Yeah, I, you know, I, 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 love, I like the guys in Fire From The Gods. I really like that band. Gojira, I yep. think they're a great band, too. Uh, of course, I love Alter Bridge. I think that would be something good here in the States to do to get together. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Steel Panther, let's do it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, because we're going to uh, Australia in February. That's the only thing that's booked in the books for us of next year because of everything that's going on. So I would definitely think that a 7 Dust with Steel Panther would be great in the States. Uh, there's so many, brother. Right. Uh, let's see. Wow, you just you really put me on the spot there. That's okay. I, could even, I would like to do it. Uh, maybe see them being out on the road with 7 Dust. Yeah. That'd be cool, too. Absolutely. So, you know, the touring you mentioned, you know, it's kind of uh, hit or miss here. You can't do the cross the U.S. kind of tour thing. So right. what's going to happen here in the next four or five months, I guess? Is it just so, going to be cherry picking or what? That's what I said. We call it a natural run, and that's from uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And those are the four days, and that's what we're looking at doing in the future. Now, when I say the future, I don't know how far that's along. <laughs> I feel like we're back to the future right now. But that's uh, allowing in the towns that are going to allow that. And so we, we're still to week to week, every two weeks, trying to figure out who's who's got the spike, who doesn't have the spike. So it's like, what do we do? Here? Right. You know? And are bands like you willing to go down? I mean, you guys play in all sorts of clubs. I get that. Yeah, but, I mean, right. some of the – like a band like Five Finger Death Punch, I mean, they play arenas. Would they be willing to go and play into a smaller club even just to get out and play? I would, you know, I would think, yeah, definitely. If it's safe and everything is, you know, legit and right. nobody's going to walk up out of there sick and take it to their family, I think that any of us as artists – I tell you what, man, I've always been the guy that said, you know what, I don't give – crap where we play at if you give me a trailer bed and park me in a mcdonald's parking lot i'm gonna bring it you yeah know what I mean? it's like that's what it's about i don't care if it's the omni uh whatever madison square garden to the backyard you know right. what it's about music and it's not about being a rock star it's about being human it's about being it's about doing what you love it's yeah. about the reason we started this is because we were in our garages and we love to play music we just got very blessed enough to be able to take it to a different plateau. So I think wherever that's at to be safe, that's where I'm going to bring it. You know what I mean? I don't care where it's at. That's awesome to hear. You know, one other question, and uh, you you don't have to answer it if you don't want, but I'm kind of uh oh. I'm curious <laughs> about I'm curious about the Live Nation thing that came out and said they want to cut artists, you know, pay and all those kind of things, the guarantees and that. I guess what's your feeling on that kind of thing? 
Oh man, I, that is a good question too. I can't, I, I, I can't say that I, I don't. I don't say I can't agree because we all have to try to to come to some type of meet happy medium together, right? Yeah. So I don't expect to make the same amount that I did two years ago or a year ago when COVID and all this crazy stuff was not happening. When now all of a sudden I have to come into a venue and play for half the people and I still want the same amount? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. So I agree. You know what I mean? It's like let's work together to continue this so it doesn't fade away. This is what we have, and uh, music is definitely I feel a healer. And thank you for having a radio station and, and continuing to broadcast and to support these bands. But I feel like uh, ultimately, with everything else going on in the world, it's so. Oh wow! There's a lot of important stuff that's going on. Yeah. But music too is important, and I feel like that we also in this industry we have to work together to come to a happy medium. If that makes sense. It does, and I'm just I'm concerned because obviously you know Live Nation wants to cut your pay, but are they going to raise ticket prices for fans? Then what are they going to do? Right. I have no idea. I just know that I I, I, I still want to be an artist and I still want to do music, but I still want to be able to take care of my family too. Absolutely. You got to do that. You have to do that because that's, that's the whole thing here. I mean, you love the passion of doing the music. If you didn't have the passion, you wouldn't do it. Absolutely. Because you've sacrificed on the road for your family, haven't you? Oh man, been gone for years. It's the first time I've really actually got to to be at home like this. And unfortunately of the, you know, the situation, but man, I've, I've uh, I've accepted it, and I've loved being daddy and being here with my kids and my wife, and just, it's been an incredible experience for us as a family to be together this long, if that makes sense. How hard was it to kind of reintegrate? It's almost like, you know, a soldier goes overseas for 18 months and doesn't see their family, and then they have to reintegrate into the into their, into their you know, family. How is it for you since you've been on the road all the time? Oh, I love it. I love getting yelled at by my wife. <laughs> <laughs> She'd have to yell at me about that. I really, I'm really hands on with all that stuff, but I really love, I love being daddy and you know and doing that. I love being an artist. I love I love it all. But for real, you know, just with any job that you do, this this has definitely given me a chance to be at home like I've never been. So I've I've what I'm trying to say is I've um, I've accepted it and I love being at home with my family until we get back out there and start going back to work again. But I've taken advantage of this time at home if that makes sense. All right, LJ, one final question. I know you got to get going, but uh, i I got to ask you this because you guys, Clint, and the guys have always been great about trying to get some up-and-coming bands, bring up some bands, some baby bands to help them out. Is there a couple bands out there that really need a, a good listen to that I should listen to or people should listen to that you know oh, about man. that we haven't heard about yet? I don't know. I think every I, – I, uh, you know, while I've been home, I've been listening to a lot of old stuff and, and working on my kids, we have uh, ukuleles that we got sent, and my, my son's got an electric guitar, so we're really practicing and playing music. But any new bands out there, ah, they, they, Is your son in a band out. yet? Is your son in a band? No, he's, a, he's four. Oh, well, you know, well, hey, come on, they start young. He's, hey, well, no, he's in a band with me, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's in a band with his, his, his dad and his sister. That's our own band, but uh, th- there's so many new bands out there, man. Uh, what's the new kid I just started following? Anton... Anton I can't you you just threw me on the spot. I, I'm a believer in all new music. How about that? You know, I love if you're out there trying to do it, just keep keep going. You know, don't give up. Uh, I love the fact that uh people are able to uh get on the internet and get their music out there and even sometimes bigger than the bands that are on the radio. Right. That this thing is a massive thing. So my only thing for all those new bands out there, just keep doing it and people like us are gonna see you. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a good thing. You know, you were you were in the market when radio was huge in rock radio, and now it's kind of, it's it's still there, but it's not as huge, is it? It's it, it, no. it, Well, you know, I, I don't know if it's as huge. It's huge. I still, I, I'm the kind of guy, when I get in the car, I still listen to the radio, you know. So okay. I don't know about other people, but I consider myself more of an old school guy. Well, yeah, you're so, my uh, age. <laughs> yeah, 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 there you go. <laughs> you're old school. <laughs> I'm old school. Is that old school? You know, I still call stuff. My wife's like, why do you always consider stuff 1999? I was like, spring break 99, I was there. So that's a good time for me. So anyway, <laughs> I feel like the radio is still there. But, uh, you know, I, like you said, I feel like I think once we start having these concerts again and putting these packages together, 
people are going to re- remember what's going on, but the radio is all we have right now. So right. Thanks to God for you guys. <laughs> wow. Hey, LJ, I appreciate this time. Thanks so much for joining me. And uh, obviously an album will be coming out in 2021. Is that the game yeah. plan? Yes, absolutely. And thank you for spinning the, uh, the new cover and uh, Soundgarden and uh, Chris Cornell and everyone. God bless you. And thank you for the uh, the energy and the, uh, the, the, the inspiration to do it. Absolutely. Now you guys work on that big uh, big four of Active Rock, okay? So then we have that big concert coming up here in a few years, Let's all right? Go. Hey, you, you're the voice. You can make it happen. I want, I, want, I want to be a part of it, okay? So let's get it yeah, going. You, you, you can make it happen. You can make the call, and all I'll do is say yes. <laughs> Sounds good. LJ, we're playing your latest song, that cover from Soundgarden back from 1994. Here's the day I tried to live. It's on the dark. It's on FM94.